Welcome eighth grade families and students to our first ever virtual Jackson promotion video. We weren't able to celebrate together, but we still want to honor you. So please enjoy the presentation that we've put together. Congratulations, you are now a high schooler and best wishes to each and every one of you. Hey guys, my fellow 8th graders. I was asked a few days ago to do the honors of writing a speech to celebrate our time at Jackson and a last chance to say goodbye to the school that I've invested three years of my life into. This honor is one that I share with Hazel and Celeste who no doubt have and or will have done an amazing job depending on where I get put in this video. And although this may just be another milestone that we look back on with a faded warm feeling of gratitude, I still find it an important task and in doing it will hopefully uplift your spirits in these troubling and confusing times, and commemorate the years of work that we've put into our time at Jackson. I also hope that not only my speech, but the others as well, will help ease the emotional stress that comes with the transition from now into the beginnings of our high school years. For a number, including myself, may never see the vast majority of the classmates that we walk the halls of JMS with ever again, and I admit it'll be a hard pill to swallow. Almost as hard as that of the burden of never delivering a final or formal goodbye in person, might I add, to the friends and teachers whose bonds I and we hold so dear. For these connections, these relationships are the ones that define our youth and will shape who we are and who we favor in the future. These may not be the most memorable or difficult or even fun years that we have or will have. In fact, the most I'll probably remember will be random snippets of funny moments, a handful of friends and teachers' names, and a frightening time when we all had to stay inside for months on end. Which reminds me of a time when I was just a mere sixth grader. I mean, can you imagine? Three whole years ago. A time when I thought my hair looked fine, but in reality it just looked like a bowl on my head. Anyway, it was probably mid-October, and everyone was just getting settled into their routines. So I, in Mr. Cameron and Mr. Thompson's class, got to witness the hilarious back-and-forth feud that they had, calling each other old or young and getting us, their students, to prank the other. But I remember distinctly one time when Mr. Thompson had us go up to Mr. Cameron's class the next day and try to convince him that we all believed that the earth was flat, which, as Mr. Thompson had found out only a few days before, Mr. Cameron was strongly against because of his first-hand experience of seeing the live footage on TV as a kid of the earth being round. And I think that really made it easy for me to learn to trust the staff more, because I was able to see their more human side and see that they were just people, not mindless robots who tell us what to do. And I was able to get more comfortable and sort of come out of my shell and dip my toes into the social pool to make new friends because in reality middle school is a time when we are just starting to make new friends that really have the same interests as us or we just have a special affinity for unlike elementary school when, when we just make friends because we don't know any better middle school is sort of a test run for us before we're thrust into the real world and not only this but it's also a time for growth a time when we begin to flesh out the nature of our personalities our likes, our dislikes, the subjects we favor, and the cliques that we try so hard to impress upon. We're no longer the children we were in elementary school. We are becoming young adults, and we will soon realize the burdens of responsibility that come with it, and our newfound independence and blossoming self-sufficiency. And so, friends, I leave you with a poem that I've written to Chris in this speech, and I ask you to take a moment to think about a time at Jackson that brought you happiness. Mighty Jackson, I say, we bid you adieu. We shall go on our way, but in you we grew. We found true friends, three years gone by, but one never pretends, we never loved you, but why? Because, O oh Jackson, you taught us things, like how to glide on our own wonderful wings, and of course how to be the best person we could, even if we got a C, you told us do better we would. Some lessons we'll always know, like to be quiet on the track, so how hard it will be to go and shed our colors of red and black. Though we may not remember, we won't try to forget. Our time with you was a splendor, and we look on without regret. Thank you guys for being such an amazing class, and, you know, have a great summer. Bye, guys. To quote the well-known composer, Lin-Manuel Miranda, my dear, terrified graduates, you were about to enter the most uncertain and thrilling period of your lives. The stories you're about to live are the ones you'll be telling your children and grandchildren and therapists. When we move on to Wilson, Jesuit, or St. Mary's, or wherever you're going, things will end up changing, whether you like it or not. There'll be more pressure from our teachers, 
Or we might lose friendships that we thought would last forever. Maybe even befriend someone that we didn't anticipate. All of us have changed in every form since the very first day of sixth grade. Some more noticeably than others. At one point, the girls were way taller than the boys, but now the majority of the boys tower over us. Back then, we were fresh out of elementary school, and I know for a fact that we all thought we were super mature and grown up, but we were at the bottom of the food chain. Looking back, we were just playing with fidget spinners and watching Stranger Things and seeing Despacito parodies and for some reason in my class, talking about Bitcoin. These past few years without question have been intriguing to say the least. As a sixth grader, outdoor school seemed like the most marvelous thing that I could possibly experience. I remember just sitting around the lunch table with my friends talking about how excited we were for this trip. And like I'd guessed, outdoor school was an absolute blast. I remember just savoring the company of my friends around the fire, screaming songs from the top of my lungs, and not having to be followed around and spied on by my parents. Seventh grade, was a pretty strange year. Everyone was weirdly obsessed with Mr. Brislin, but we don't have to go super in depth with that. But I have to say, our Gorge field trip had the potential to be really remarkable, but was an utter disaster. Lots of people were separated from their groups, including myself, buses broke down, buses were late, and we couldn't go to half of the places that were originally intended. Oh yeah, it was also pouring. In eighth grade, what even happened this year besides World War III almost starting, COVID-19, Tiger King, Kobe dying, the locust swarms in Africa and India, the Australian bushfires, murder hornets, the presidential campaign, and scientists announcing that the supervolcano in Yellowstone is long overdue for an eruption that could wipe out the entire United States. I'd also like to address that these past couple of weeks have been very challenging for many people, and I just wanted to say, Black Lives Matter. I know many of us are excited about the idea of high school, and many others are overwhelmed by the thought. But we all know that's where we can really find out who we are as an individual. We'll depend on ourselves more often and have several added responsibilities. This will be our chance to step out of our comfort zones and accomplish something that we never thought we were capable of. We'll be sitting right on the edge of being a child and adult, which at times can be particularly challenging. Compared to other school years, I think everyone can agree with me that this year has been a roller coaster ride. But honestly, I think that's kind of an understatement. I mean, we're literally living in the middle of a global pandemic. So many things have happened these last couple of months that it's hard to keep track of everything. But even in our current situation, we still have to focus on what's ahead. If we as a generation put in the effort and motivation to educate ourselves academically, socially, and politically, we have the chance to change the world for the better. I'd like to end this speech by thanking Kikoa and Hazel for being a part of this with me and quoting Eric Roth, the screenwriter of the film, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. For what it's worth, it's never too late, or in my case, too early to be whoever you want to be. There's no time limit. Stop whenever you want. You can change or stay the same. There are no rules to this thing. We can make the best or the worst of it. I hope you make the best of it. And I hope you see things that startle you. I hope you feel things you never felt before. I hope you meet people with a different point of view. I hope you live a life that you're proud of. If you find that you're not, I hope you have the courage to start all over again. Thank you. I remember my first day at Jackson as a sixth grader feeling anxious about middle school and intimidated by the seventh and eighth graders. It seemed so foreign and different for me especially, having come from a tiny elementary school where basically everyone knew each other, and I really had no idea what to expect. I mean, I was afraid that school would be really hard and I'd have trouble keeping up. Now, the first few weeks of, weeks of school were pretty difficult for me, but I adjusted quickly and soon came to realize that I actually enjoyed school quite a bit. I was lucky to have some of my friends from fifth grade to help support me, but I also made some new ones too. Coming from a school where there were really only about 25 kids in my entire grade, it was pretty overwhelming to be in such a large space full of strangers. But as the year went on, I realized that I actually liked that space and I liked having the freedom to be more independent. As quickly as it came, the year was over and I was on to seventh grade. I was definitely more confident this time around and I was excited to start. I do remember that I learned a lot about myself that year though and 
I struggled with intense anxiety and emotional challenges that made going to school seem dreadful at times. But with the help of some amazing people, I was able to stay focused and finish out strong. Finally, eighth grade came around and I was more than ready to start. Um, and strangely enough, out of all three years, despite this whole pandemic incident, this has been my favorite. Now, I'm not gonna pretend that it's been entirely smooth sailing because it certainly hasn't, but it's allowed me to branch out and explore new opportunities that I wouldn't have taken on my own. While I still struggle with anxiety on a daily basis, it's part of who I am and I've learned to accept that. I know these past couple of months have been pretty difficult for a lot of people, myself included. I remember thinking it would be pretty easy to stay at home and pretty much do nothing all day, but the truth is I'm kind of losing my mind. And I know I'm not the only one. I am optimistic about the future though, and while we can't take back the damage and all the chaos this pandemic has brought, I am hopeful that we'll recover. It's not all bad either. I mean, I've found a lot of new hobbies like painting and cycling and being able to get outside. And I've also discovered the beauty of sleeping in. But we've all also been forced to get better at managing our own schedules since we have no daily routine anymore and finding the time and the motivation to do our work. Plus, I've seen a lot of happy dogs around lately. I mean, they're the real winners here. At any rate, I'm a very different person than I was three years ago. As a sixth grader, I was shy and wasn't really confident in myself or my abilities at all. And sure, I still struggle with many of the same issues to this day, but I think I've grown in the sense that I'm a much more confident and organized person now. I'm also much more self-aware and as cliche as it may sound, my time at Jackson has actually helped me learn to learn and develop as a person. I'll always remember the outstanding teachers and staff that have inspired me to push myself and strive to be better. And I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's helped us develop, not only as students, but as people too. I'm really gonna miss a lot of people, but at the same time, I feel prepared and ready for high school. Hopefully I'll see most of your faces next year, but if I don't, then I really wish you all the best of luck.
You guys have been a great class. I uh, really, really have enjoyed working with you guys. Um, you got a lot of sweethearts in your group, and it's just been uh, it's been fun. And uh, I miss you guys. And I hope that we get to cross paths again sometime soon. All right. Congratulations, Jackson eighth graders. Good luck in high school, and enjoy your summer. Go. Hey, eighth graders. I just want to say congratulations on making it through. I really miss you guys. And we had a lot of laughs this year. Uh, I wish we could have finished the year together, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, so I wish you all have a great summer and uh, take care of yourselves. If you get stressed out, don't forget to breathe. Don't forget your Deepak. And, uh, Come back and visit sometime if you're allowed to. All right, you guys, have a great summer. Take care. Hey, my awesome eighth graders. I just want to say I had a fabulous year with you. I miss you guys all so much, and I know you're just going to all go do such outstanding and amazing things in high school. Please come back and visit. Say hi. Sing me a song. Do a little dance. You know, all the fun stuff. And really just continue to work hard and do your best. I know you all have such amazing potential and you are going to make this world a better place. I miss you all. Eighth graders, congratulations. 
Obviously, this isn't the ending that all of us sort of envisioned when we started down this year, but you've done a great job. Congratulations on moving to the next step and understand that you have probably equally taught me as much as I am hoping that I taught you. Congratulations. I miss you guys. This was not how I wanted to end the year. I'm sure it's not how you wanted to end the year, but man, it's been a year. Um, I really miss y'all. Uh, I hope at some point we're able to be in the same room together and, uh, and just chill. And I don't know, watch some Bob Ross or something. So take it easy, guys. I hope you have an absolutely fabulous high school career. I know that all of you guys can be super successful. So miss you. See you soon, hopefully. Bye. Congratulations, eighth graders. You did it. You finished middle school. You're going on to high school. And I know you are more than prepared to start this next journey in your education because I remember the day you came to Jackson as sixth graders, and I have seen the incredible progress and growth that all of you have exhibited. So I know you have the strength and the skills to go on and do really, really well at high school. We will miss you, congratulations, and we hope you stay in touch. Eighth graders wishing you all the best. It's been a pleasure teaching um, those of you I've had in class and getting to know others of you I haven't taught. Go into this world, do great things, come back and visit us, and most importantly, don't forget to be kind. Take care. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Walker, class of 2020. Dog, stop that. Class of 2020. <laughs> Here, stop. leave him alone. Class of 2020, I'm super jazzed about all the possibility that you guys bring. You guys are an amazing group. I will really miss you. All my lovable chuckleheads, Easy e George, the Lizard, um... Randall, I'll miss you all. You guys are fantastic, and I hope for great things for you guys in the future. It's going to be all right. We'll all get through this. Good luck.